Today I'm going to be tying a fly that has proven uh, really successful for me uh, lake fishing in Iceland for Arctic char uh, especially. Uh, we have a lake here in Iceland uh, around 45 minutes outside of our capital Reykjavik. Uh, it's called Lake Thingallavat. Uh, most famous for its huge uh, brown trouts uh, of course but also holds Arctic char in, in, in huge numbers. Uh, so I tied this pattern up uh, around, I don't know, three or four years ago, uh, and as I said, it's proven really successful. Uh, the hook I'm using today is from A-Rex, it's called FW541. This is the standard grubber, grubber hook from, from, from A-Rex, strong and sharp. Uh, I have a 28 millimeter uh, brass bead. Uh, at the end of the hook. Uh, you can use matte black as well. Uh, pretty much the only thing I suggest is that you keep the bead uh, in the darker colors, not gold or copper or something like that. That's uh, pretty much the only thing I, I, I recommend. Now this fly has a hot spot. Uh, I've tied it orange. I've tied it to a red, a fl uh, fluorescent red. Uh, today I'm going to be tying the orange one, but it's up to you which way you go. Both have, have been really successful, so. I go fairly deep into the bend of the hook for the hot spot. Now this is a size 12 hook. Uh, you can tie it in a size 10 as well, or 14 even. But 12 is probably the most, the one I, the, the size I use the most. Uh, once I'm done tying the hotspot, I switch out the threads and tie the rest of the fly with a brown, or a cocoa brown thread. Uh, you can use black as well, but I feel the brown is best. Prepare a dubbing loop. Move the thread back to the hotspot. And leave the loop. You're going to use it a little bit later. Now the body uh, is made from a material from Techstream called EasyDub. Uh, I'm using yellow today, but I'm going to use a mar marker to uh, color it olive. Uh, you can use, of course, the original olive as well. I just had this one laying around, so... As you can see, this material frays pretty easily. So you need to be a bit careful with it. Now before wrapping the easy top, it's a good idea to twist the thread a bit, it makes it a bit stronger and keeps it from, from fraying too much. Wrap touching turns up the hook shank. And I'd stop just before you reach the bead, just to leave a bit of space for the for the dubbing collar that we're gonna put in later. Now for the dubbing loop, well, no, that's not correct. We're gonna color the body a bit. Uh, I have a olive marker that I'm gonna use. Um, as I said before, you can use the original olive. Easy dub from Techstream or 
pretty much any material that you like. It's just about, I like this material but it, because it lets me uh, make the fly a little bit bushier, a little bit more buggy. That's, that's the idea behind this. Uh, for the dubbing loop, I have some bait fish dubbing in olive. Grab a well, fa fairly big bunch of, of strands. And before I put it in the dubbing loop, I like to put a little bit of wax on it. Uh, it's not necessary, of course, but just something that I'm I'm used to. As you can see, my, my wax, dubbing wax, has been around a bit. Uh, it's been on my table for a couple of weeks and it bears the battle scars. This is the high tack wax from, from Loon. Everything sticks to it. Dubbing spinner. So what I do is I just insert a bit of the material close the loop spin be careful to not spin too much it's going to break the thread And wrap the dubbing loop, loop up the hook shank. We'll worry about how this looks a little bit later. We're going to brush this out and make it sweet. Now what the baitfish dubbing does is it kind of encases the, the bug. If you imagine the olive easy dub and the hot spot being the bug itself, uh, once it get, gets wet, the baitfish dubbing forms like some kind of case around it. It looks really nice. Velcro. Brush it out a little bit. Uh, the collar is going to be made out of uh, squirrel dubbing. Natural grey. And what I like to do is I like to split the thread and touch up the squirrel. Makes it a bit buggier. The wax again. I really need to get this cleaned. A few fibers of squirrel dubbing. Just touched up sparsely up the thread. It doesn't need to be too too much. There you go. Close the thread. Spin. Pull the dubbing back with each turn of the thread just to be able to manage it a little bit better. Once you're happy, apply a small, small amount of varnish to the thread before you tie it off. 
you can of course warn this after after you're done tying it off but i feel that doing it doing it this way keeps the tie off a bit cleaner Okay, bring your Velcro up again, press this out a little bit better, now as you can see it's a little bit too bushy, bushy. Uh, so just pull the fibers back from the bait fish dubbing and cut it just behind the hook shank. Now to give you the full view of the fly, of how it's going to look when it's wet, which is of course the most important thing. As you can see, the bait fish stubbing forms that case around the bug and it looks pretty nice. A really effective uh, pattern for Arctic char in Iceland, so tie one up, put it in your box and tight lines.